All right, welcome to Tico update video number three. And I didn't think I would have to be making uh, two videos in one week, but man, there has been a lot of information uh, discussed uh, by Tico this week. Um, a lot more backers since Monday have gotten their Tico and a lot more issues, but as well as progress has come from it. So first, um, let's talk about um, the... Uh, terms of service that debacle that happened so just like any other company that has a wi-fi enabled device tico in the terms of service is going to collect certain bits of data about prints and conditions of the printer and diagnostic information and all that and send it back home so then they can use that information to make updates and better product and, and all of that. Well, you know, this is the age of the NSA and, you know, not trusting uh, companies and worrying about data leaks. And, you know, people use 3D printers to print off prototypes. And so people are like, well, you know, is it going to know what I printed and send you that? And then people can uh, intercept that signal and then reconstruct the print and you know and then you couldn't use the printer unless you accepted the terms of service but you accepted the terms of service without having the option to opt into the anonymous data collection and you know we don't know what anonymous data was collected so it was a huge huge debacle it's been i think uh solved for the most part so you know, people were questioning how the data was being sent. Uh, you know, of course, they answered, you know, the most secure way as possible. But, you know, that's, you know, you can never prevent everything. So they were like, well, you know, uh, but we're going to go back to the drawing board and see what, what the minimal amount of data we need uh, to then know what we need to fix and updates and, and all that. So they're going to do that. And then they also added a, di a dialogue box and, you know, changed how you accept the terms of service and, and all of that. Um, so that, that'll be nice. Um, so, yeah, that's that was the first debacle, which that lasted about a day or two. And, you know, they're like, you do. Every, everybody realizes that that's something that we are not the only ones. You know, we're not the first people to do this. Your phone, Windows, all of that does that. You know, and yeah, we know we don't, you don't trust them. However, you know, we're being up more upfront about it than, than anybody else, you know. Um, so, you know, whatever. And most of the people that were complaining were like, well, you know, I would give the data anyway. So I, I wasn't really sure why uh, the complaints, I guess, they just wanted an option or something to complain about. So, yeah. So that was issue number one. Issue number two um is the glue the glue that is used to hold uh everything together some uh early backers have gotten uh their printers and they're in like three different parts um where the glue was supposed to hold that stuff together now it's an easy fix you just need to get some uh your own glue and glue it back together it's just some super glue or you know some some easy type of glue and you know probably what happened was during shipping it got shifted and, and and broke off or you know it went from one type of climate to another and that weakened the glue and then along with vibration broke it you know some easy stuff so tico's gonna be uh upping upping the glue quality on that again it doesn't uh, prevent functionality it's just like the top plate and then the glass like the plastic part where you see into um you know so easy easy fix for those uh that have had an issue um so i think that's that's good that's an easy fix something that they can solve pretty quickly before they start shipping out um the other uh units and you know hey um that's something that they you know really can't test they're like you know we tested everything we didn't think the glue of all things would would fail so um yeah that that again that should be solved now and the people that have gotten the, had the glue issue it's only i think a, a couple maybe two or three 
and you know they they got it solved right quick and you know no no big deal um another issue that somebody had and a couple of people have had is is getting the the filament into the feeder um par- apparently you know because you, you go into the software you say load filament it does its thing and then you put the plastic uh into a tube and then it catches it and then pulls it down while well, people uh weren't pushing hard enough because you got to use a lot of force and they didn't want to break it so they were kind of being cautious rightfully so and so then they found out oh no i really got to push really hard to get it to to get it to go in there and their mind tico says that sometimes rarely that stuff gets in that tube and you know can block it a little bit and then but you know if you force through it it'll it'll go through and then not be uh broken so again issue solved uh but they're gonna you know tweak a little things and and hopefully make it easier to to load the filament um somebody had some issues with getting it into access point mode and apparently if you turn the unit upside down it will auto trigger a backup thing in the software where it will just boot straight into access point mode. You don't have to do anything. So that's that's an interesting uh, protocol there um, that they put into it. So that was that was nice. Um, so basically, the big issue of this week was quality of prints. The print quality is not good. There's a lot of issues. And we kind of talked about this and I had pictures of it um, in the in Monday's video. But it has gotten way, you know, more people have now gotten it. More people have now seen it. It's gotten way out of hand now. It's just, you know, one of those trains that just keeps on going down, down, down the tracks and you can't stop it. Um, so, you know, people are like, I thought your software was further down the line than this. And, you know, with your, uh, ruling that we can't use third party G code or it voids the warranty and yada, 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 you need to get your slicer better. You need to, you know, focus on this stuff. Why weren't you doing this stuff this whole time? And, you know, we didn't know that it would be this way. Well, come to find out, <laughs> uh, if you had been following the campaign for a while, you knew that they were focusing on the printer itself and the hardware, getting that tuned, and on this side, they were working on uh, the back end, the G-code, the slicer, all of that. Now, they had been talking and bragging about their user interface, which is impressive, is easy to use, is, you know, simple. But people equated that to them working on, you know, the slicer, the important stuff. Well, that's a lot more complicated. Coming up with a user interface is a lot easier than creating G-code and a slicer for a 3D printer um, because the, there's more variables involved with a slicer uh, than there is with creating a user interface. The user interface is just like, is this intuitive? Do Will people understand this? Whereas the slicer, you have to go, okay, what if this happens? What if they want to print this? How will it handle? You know, what if, you know, there's a little, you know, what if they tweak this? You know, how will it respond? Okay, this is happening. How do we fix the motors and to do this instead? you know, that sort of thing. So it's a lot more complicated. And if you read through the uh, comments and the updates, they were pretty straightforward on the fact that they were, yes, the user interface was there. Uh, No, the slicer was not. And that would take a little while. Um, So there's that. But we got an update yesterday. And I think this is probably the best thing that they could have done they should have done it from the beginning but i understand you want to control your product you want to know that it's safe you want to know that it'll work and so controlling all the elements for your product allows you to control uh, 
a lot of things, just like Apple. They control the software, the hardware, all of it. And that way, if something is broken, uh, they know exactly what to do because there's no question about where it's broken or how it did that. You know, you don't have to deal with anybody else but yourself. So I understand that. But they changed their policy on third-party G-Code. So they say that, and I'll read it straight from their um, comments. So it goes, And lastly, some good news. We're completely dropping the policy about third-party G-Code, voiding the warranty. After being brought back into the limelight because of our slicer uh, state, We gave the whole policy a great deal of thought and we couldn't think of any reason to keep it any anymore. We created the policy early on in the campaign based on the limitations of our prototypes. However, over the past year, we've developed a much more robust design that can deal with mishaps. There just aren't many ways left for the user to break their Tico with third party G code. Unless they went out of their way. Sometimes we get so caught up with uh, looking forward that we forgot to look back and, and challenge our old decisions. But this is the result. So feel free to use third-party G-code to your heart's content. Just drag and drop pre-sliced G-code files into the web app and we're good to go. The old web app will give you a warning. Um, the updated one will not uh, have fun printing. So, yeah, I, I think that's great. They are admitting that, uh, you know, maybe we don't need to hold it down so much. We have created better hardware uh, that is more robust than we thought. And you know, hey, go ahead, use third-party G-code. If it breaks, you know, something majorly went wrong that we couldn't, you know, that not even controlling the G-code would have helped. So I think that's a great policy because there's a lot of great open source things for 3D printing. And if your 3D printer uses it, it exponentially gets better automatically. And, you know, I don't think Tico wants to make a MakerBot style uh, problem to where you're open source, you're for the consumer, you're fighting the man, you're, you know, doing what you can to make everything open source, you know, people are coming up with good ideas for you and you're, you're using them and, and implementing on, um, um, as standard and then you get bought out. By the people that you said you didn't like. And you're not giving credit to the open source community for making you what you are. So I don't think Tico wants to be the next maker bot uh, of that. So I think this is a good step in in the right direction. I think their openness with their terms of service is a step in the right direction. And, you know, being open about what the data they collect is being used for and what data they use, they collect um, in general, um, is, is all steps forward. They need to be open and honest. They need to not only be a representation of how uh, cheap 3D printing can be, but they also need to be a representation of how a tech company should be Um, when you're not alone in this and you've taken money basically pre-sales from people and you're using it to create a product you need to think of them as investors each individual as an investor and you have to remember just because they're not there with you every day just because they're not necessarily on the board just because they're not uh, knowledgeable on the subject doesn't mean that they shouldn't be in mind with every decision that you make. Now, sometimes you can't please everybody, but you do need to be open and honest on why and how you came to conclusions about your product. And I think Tico has done a very good job about this. This is one of the 
best Kickstarters that I've ever been a part of. Um, just the monthly updates, the comment interaction, a lot better. Uh, I feel a lot better about this one than Ouya. And I was really excited about Ouya. Um, and look how that turned out. So Tico, keep up the good work. Um, I look forward to future updates. I look forward to the finalization of everything. I mean, every, you know, the hardware is finalized, but I mean, you know, how the G code stuff turns out and, and, and all of that. And, and when I finally get my printer, <laughs> um, you know, maybe, maybe move it up the line. You know what I mean? <laughs> But no, don't, don't do that. Um, I can wait. Um, but yeah, so, uh, that's what's happened in just a couple of days. There's so much, so much has changed in just a couple of days with more people getting their, uh, printers and people, you know, speaking their minds and Tico listening. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And just a short amount of time, what has changed? So, uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, like it if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. Leave a comment on what you think about it. Um, and as always, thank you for watching.